This session will focus on the following, um, paper one, specifically on business strategies. Business strategies form part of the bigger topic, which is business environments. Um, so business strategies is one of three sub topics that you will find uh, um, under business environments in, in paper one. The other two um, under business environments will be your business sectors and then also your business legislation, which is your nine business laws. So um, we're only going to focus on business strategies because we believe this, this section of the work under business environments is a little bit tough for our learners. So we will see if we can maybe um, um, try for you guys to understand it a little bit better today. So then um, common mistakes, we're also going to look at common mistakes that learners have made in past um, exam papers um, when they answer the question. So we're going to look at those um, common mistakes. And then lastly, we will try to give um, suggestions and tips on how to structure your answers so that you get that 80% and above uh, mark for your final exam. Right, so we said that business strategies is the topic that we're going to focus on. So as I said earlier, as we as individuals have our own challenges, so businesses also experience a lot of challenges in all three, the business environments, the micro environment, the market environment, and also the macro environment. So I've brought in um, news that I found that is very recent and very current. And I would also urge um, you, Grade 12, to also watch the news and see how you can use this news um, in as part of examples in your um, essay type questions. So um, don't uh, um, ignore the fact that you guys mustn't uh, um, take note of the news. It's very, very it's vitally important for business learners to keep up to date with the latest trends. Um, that is happening out there. So um, this article um, is we more than 37,000 cases of Apple Tizer are being recalled. Um, Apple Tizer is one of the products uh, manufactured by Coca-Cola. So um, the fact that it has been recalled means that there was something wrong with the soft drink. Um, so that is a challenge that Coca-Cola is facing at the moment. Um, it says there the article, the recall of Apple Tizer products has been confirmed by South Africans National Consumer Commission um, with details of voluntary and dot, 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 and then the article continues. Now, the South Africa National Consumer Commission, they are a regulator of government. In other words, between um, inverted commas, they are the watchdogs. So they watch the businesses when it comes to um, um, items that they are selling and they watch that the businesses apply quality, specifically quality assurance. Um, so you can actually use this article as an example and the quality of performance as well, specifically quality assurance. Um, um, yes, so. Then it continues and it says Coca-Cola recalls Apple Tizer 750 ml from Coles and Woolworths as it may cause illness. So these items were already delivered. These products were already delivered to these retailers. And so it's a big, big concern for government that the consumers might become ill as a result of um, this uh, um, mistake made by Coca-Cola. So it says the Apple Tizer 750 ml, a sparkling apple juice has been recalled because testing revealed a higher than acceptance level of mycotoxin. Mycotoxin in simple terms as we know it is basically fungi that can be found in fruit, uh, fruit type items. So that is, is, is very harmful to the consumer. So therefore Coca-Cola is sitting with a big, big challenge at the moment. So um, they have to think of strategies as to how to get out of this challenge and how to build, rebuild the trust uh, for their product in the customers. In other words, how to gain the loyalty of their customers again. So they have this uh, challenge at the moment. And there we see um, 
on this section here, the Commission uh, urges the consumers to check the appetizer products amid the recall. So they encourage all the consumers who have bought these products now to uh, bring it back and then the, the customers will be refunded. Um, then there's also uh, uh, a heading that says Consumer Commission urges the clients to return recalled appetizer products. Right, and then I have a, 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 a little video for you to, so that you can just get more information with regard to um, this challenge that Coca-Cola is facing at the moment, specifically the appetizer um, product. So sorry, um, grade 12, I really... Exam prep section B is on your screen at the moment. So we're going to identify common mistakes made by learners in the past. Um, and then we're also going to, I'm going to give you some suggestions as to how to overcome those common mistakes that were made in the past question papers. So you, um, great to have, you're supposed to have your um, booklet in front of you that says Metro North Education District Spring School Intervention 2021 for the top performing learners, okay? So question one on your booklet says, name any two types of integration strategies. So this is a very popular question that we can find under section B um, of paper one. So your action verb there says name. So when your action verb says name, the examiner or the marker doesn't require an in-depth answer from you because they uh, um, part marking doesn't apply here. You will get your marks at the end of your answer. So um, it's not there's not much depth needed in a case where they uh, ask you to name um, the action verb name. So um, it says name any two types of integration strategies. I want you to... If possible, if you have highlighters and pens with you, underline integration um, strategies and just make the following note that integration refers to mergers where companies come together. So you can just write there. I'm, I'm sure you guys understand what a merger is. So you can just write the merger and the focus with integration strategies is on companies buying out or taking over other companies. OK, I just want you to keep that in mind. I will repeat, underline integration. And with regard to integration, you, uh, will be, it will be merges. And you can put the between brackets, buying out other companies. So the focus of integration is only on companies who integrate or companies who merge with each other. No products really here or services involved. It is an, a strategy where one company buys over another company. Okay. Right. So common mistakes that, that um, great tools have made in the past and which you guys are not going to make is that some learners are confused with, with integration strategies and diversification strategies, right? Um, as I said earlier, integration is where two companies merge or they combine. So the focus is on, on taking over other businesses, right, or companies. But diversification, the word diversification, that tells you it, it actually means different, different. So the focus of diversification strategies is on products where businesses introduce new products that are either related or unrelated to the current products that they have. With diversification, the focus is on the products and not really on taking over other companies. So businesses introduce new products to expand their current product range. It can either be related to their current product or it can be totally unrelated to the product that they are currently selling or service even that they are selling. Uh, I've, I hope I made myself clear there. So the suggestions on how to deal with this, with this type of, of mistake 
is that learners must be encouraged to use practical examples. If you are able to, to apply a, an example of integration strategies or diversification strategies, you are able to see clearly the difference between these two types of, of strategies. Um, so they encourage learners to use practical examples when explaining the meaning of diversification and integration strategies. So um, diversification, I already said, is um, when companies want to introduce a new product that is either related to their current product or is totally unrelated. So um, also it can even be service a service as well. So um, diversification might be um, we a company is maybe selling um, burgers and then they decide to add chips to it, right? So it's a related product. Then you get businesses that are maybe a car dealership, they sell cars, but then they decide they will offer the customers insurance as well. Now the insurance are totally unrelated to, to the car dealership. So that is what businesses are doing at the moment. Then you get a uh, um, horizontal type of diversification strategy where um, the, the, the businesses are, are selling um, uh, products that are, that are related, that are related um, to each other. Um, let me just give you another example. Um, That. Okay. Okay. Let me just see. Carmen, while you are busy looking, uh, yes, Dr. Rosendahl, can you please complete the attendance register? Thank you. Okay. Oh, just seeing the classification. Okay. So, um. Right, so another strategy might be where the business sell or add totally unrelated products uh, um, to their current uh, business range. If I can give an example of Richard Branson that you can also use in your essay, if uh, this is part of an essay, is where Richard Branson has started off with um, uh, uh, music, uh, music selling music at first and then he opened companies called virgin active gym and then he also has virgin airlines i don't know if they're still in existence um then there's also virgin cell phone network so none of these um services or products that he owns are are related in any way so they are totally different and that is why that what we would call uh, such a type of diversification conglomerate where none of the, the products or services are related to each other. Okay, whereas integration is where one company buys over another company. It can either be in the same um, distribution channel or it can be one competitor buying out another competitor. So integration, the focus is on companies coming together. Diversification is on different products, right? Um, that the business um, intends selling to the customers so that they can attract more customers to the business. So diversification, the focus is on pro products here, adding new products or services and integration, um, buying out or taking over companies. Okay, so the answer to question one would then be um, forward. The, the question only asks for two types of integration strategies. So the one is forward vertical or is a possible answer, then backward vertical and then horizontal. And there you can see you, you get the mark at the end of the answer. So forward vertical would be, say, for example, we take Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a supplier. So Coca-Cola decides to buy out the retailer ShopRite or pick and pay or Woolworths that will be for going forward in the in the distribution channel. We as, as backward, um, say for example, Coca-Cola is still the supplier, but now they buy out the farm that is selling uh, um, um, sugar cane to them, for example. So they, they would buy out the farmer then. 
that will then be backward vertical. Horizontal will be if Coca-Cola is still the supplier, if they buy out Pepsi, for example, horizontal if you buy out companies in the same industry. So they are in the soft drink industry. So therefore, buying out Pepsi will be in the same industry. Um, okay, I hope you are okay with that, Rosendahl. Are there any questions before we move on? No questions yet, Carmen. Okay, thank you. Right, in question two, um, outline the steps in strategy evaluation. Um, please pay attention to the mark allocation. If the mark allocation is six, then it means that you have to give three answers. Your question is outline. So outline will be, is where you will get your marks at the end of the sentence, at the end of the sentence. OK, so common mistakes that learners have made with regard to this question, which is also a very popular question, as it can be part of a section B or as part of a section C question. Uh, some candidates confuse the steps in strategy evaluation with a strategic management process. Now, steps in strategy evaluation. Um, I want would like you guys just to underline strategy evaluation and just make a note there that this takes place um, while the strategy has already been implemented. So there's already a plan of action in place. Right, so the business has already um, um, implemented the strategy. So evaluation means they are going to test whether the strategy has worked. They're going to assess whether the strategy has worked. So the strategy is already in place. They are monitoring it um, and checking and measuring whether the strategy has made a difference or whether um, they must change it again. So this strategy is already in place. Compared to strategic management process, this happens before, before strategy evaluation. So strategic management process, this, the action plan is not in process yet. It has not been implemented yet. So that is the difference. So strategic management process that deals with um, analyzing the vision of the business, the mission statement of the business. It also has to do with um, using the industrial um, tools such as your SWOT analysis, your um, Porter's Five Forces model, or um, PESTEL to analyze your three environments like your micro, your market, and your, your macro environment. So from th the analysis of these environments and using those industrial tools, a business will then identify the challenges that they are facing, and then they will discuss what action plan they're going to put in place. So in this process here, the action plan has not been implemented yet. The strategy has not been implemented compared to here where it says evaluation. You must remember it is already in place. So the business is already monitoring whether the, the um, action plan is working, right? So I hope um, um, I, I showed you the difference now between the two. Then they say other learners confuse this question with either the steps in strategy formulation. Um, steps in strategy formulation, this will not be attested um, for the 2021 exam because I think the main reason behind it is that um, steps in strategy formulation, that is a combination of uh, strategy evaluation and strategic management process. So um, if they should ask all three of these in a question paper, it will actually be a repeat of the same question and the same answers, right? I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. So steps in strategy formulation will not be tested. So um, there is a possibility that this uh, strategy evaluation can be tested and management process can be tested because these two are linked to steps in strategy formulation. So therefore, for, for this year, this will not be tested because this consists of a combination of strategy evaluation, 
and strategic management process. Then they say learners also confuse it with steps in problem solving. Now, steps in problem solving is not part of paper one, grade 12. This is part of creative thinking. So this will fall under paper two. So please don't confuse um, your content of, of paper two with paper one. So steps in problem solving does not belong here at all, right? So many candidates were not awarded because this was their responses. They said that steps in strategy evaluation is formulate the strategy and implement the strategy. Now, formulate the strategy and implement the strategy. They are part of steps in strategy formulation, which will not be tested in, in this year's exam. As, are there any questions with regard to that um, grade 12? No questions in the chat, Carmen. OK, we will continue. We will continue, yes. OK, we have spotted the error there. So the suggestion they would be um, also make use of practical examples are also effective when explaining the steps in strategy evaluation. So well, I will try to bring in on the next slide and we'll try to bring in the example of Coca-Cola and Apple Times again. So to answer the question two, outline the steps in strategy evaluation. If we take the example of Coca-Cola, specifically Apple Times and the, the challenge that they are facing at the moment, it says here that um, when you outline the steps in strategy evaluation, when you do a strategy evaluation, Remember, strategy evaluation, underline that the strategy is already in place or it's already in pro a process in the business. So if you can just make a note there, the plan of action is already in process. OK, so it says examine the underlying basis of a, of a business strategy. So um, Coca-Cola might come up with a strategy where they're going to try to, to win the trust of the customers again. Um, and, and try as far as possible to gain the market share by keeping their customers. Um, so they might make use of different types of <clears throat> intensive strategies. Um, um, for example, um, intensive marketing strategies or advertising strategies where they will promote the Apple ties again and where they will maybe lower the price, um, put it on a promotion and convince the consumer that the product is safe and that the consumer can now buy the product at a cheaper price. So that might be the, the strategy that they're looking at is maybe to um, try to gain the trust of their loyal customers again. Then they say that uh, specific dates must be set for control and follow up. So it means that when the strategy is in place, say, for example, they want to uh, market uh, the product um, extensively again, uh, specifically appetizer, there will be a starting date as to when they're going to start the advertising campaign. And then there will be a follow up. They will see whether the customers are, are then um, buying the appetizer again and also a follow up to see um, if the customer is now happy with the, the apple ties uh, um, of Coca-Cola. Then it says they must look forward and backward into the implementation process. Looking forward, it means they're going to monitor when they start the advertising campaign. Are there any mistakes are taking place again, right? So, and they're going to make sure that it starts on the right date as planned. And looking backward, they're going to measure whether this um, strategy has worked and how can they measure that? The, the sales, if there's an increase in sales for the specific brand, Appletizer, then they know that the strategy was successful. Um, so um, they will compare the expected performance with the actual performance and then they will measure the perform business performance in order to determine the reasons for deviations. Deviations is if there's any mistake, so they will pick it up when they do this, the forward and the backward process, implementation process. They will pick up any mistakes happening and then they will rec rectify it immediately um, um, to make sure 
that there's no deviations, right? Um, in this product again. So um, we will move on from here. Right, so question three in your booklet says recommend ways in which businesses could deal with challenges that are posed by the following pestle factors. So I would like you to underline recommend ways, underline recommend ways. Then you make a note there, refer page 33 of your core notes. I think your teacher will be able to help you here. Um, recommend ways in which the business could deal. So recommend ways, you underline that, and then you just make a note, refer core notes, page 33, that you can do after the session. When you go to uh, page 33 in your core notes, I stand to be corrected, there will be three columns on page 33. The one column will be your pistol factors, your, your middle column will be your challenges for your various uh, pistol factors, and your third column will be your recommendations. Now, your answer to question three will be your third column, the recommendations specifically to these two uh, pistol factors here, technological and environmental. Specifically to those two, technological and environmental. So, yeah, they only want the recommendations. They don't want the challenges. So you mustn't confuse the challenges with the recommendation. It says recommend ways. So they want the recommendations in which businesses could deal with the challenges that are posed by the, by the following pistol factors. So that will be your third column in your core notes um, on page 33. So common mistakes that learners have made um, when they answered this question, um, many candidates could not explain how technological factors and environmental factors pose a challenge to the business. And then other responses were based on strategies to deal with the challenges posed by these factors. So basically learners are confused between the recommendations and the challenges, so you have to study the challenges first in the, the second column, in the middle column of your notes, and then look at what recommendation can be used to deal with that specific challenge. So you have to study at least two um, under each pistol element and two um, recommendations under each pistol element um, for four marks, right? And it says recommend ways. So the action verb recommend um, you will get your answers, your, your marks at the end of the, the answer. Are there any questions with regard to this um, grade 12? Where is Rosenthal so quiet? Where is the <laughs> Are you guys not there, ma'am? There's no response. No response. Okay, we'll just continue. Okay. Then the suggestions um, that we came up with to deal with this uh, question, specific question, is strategies must be devised to illustrate how the business can deal with challenges posed by pistol factors. So the focus is on how. How can the business deal with each of those uh, challenges that we find under each of those pistol factors? Okay, and there we have the answers, and you can see that um, the action verb is recommend in the question. So therefore, um, the the marker doesn't require or um, uh, that in depth answer. So you will get your marks at the end of your your um, answers. Um, and please take note of your mark allocation so that you don't write too much or too many answers because you're going to run out of time. So in this case, your mark allocation is for four marks. So therefore only two, two sentences are required here under each of the pistol elements. Okay, 
so we can move on to question four. Identify the force of Fortis Five Forces model that applies to Louise's um, hair salon in each statement below. So Porter's five forces model is an industrial tool that the business uses to analyze the market environment. I will repeat, it's an industrial tool that the business will use to analyze the market environment. So in your market environment, you're going to find your customers, you're going to find your competitors, um, you're going to find uh, your substitute products, and also new businesses that will enter um, a specific industry or a specific market. So um, it says here, yeah, a port is five forces, just to recap, it has to do with, it will, this industrial tool will analyze how much power each of those elements in the market environment have. How much power does the, the buyers have? How much power does the competitors have? Um, what are the threats of, of, of what threats does a new entrance have for the specific industry? So that the business analyzes the power of each of those elements under the market environment. Um, so it says here, um, 4.1, Luazi opened a new air salon across the street, offering services at lower prices than Louisa's hair salon. So clearly Louisa opened a new hair salon. So that is her business. And then just across the street, there's a similar business, um, Louisa's hair salon, right? So what are they of each other, right? So you must be able to determine that. And then, and, and which of the Porter's five forces are at play here? Then 4.2, Louisa's hair salon is highly profitable and attracts many new entrepreneurs to enter this market. So the focus here is on the new entrepreneurs. New entrepreneurs are new businesses that are entering the current market that they are in. So just think about that a little bit, which of the five forces model will be at play here in 4.2. So comments, yes. We have Florida High School who has also joined us. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. okay. So Florida High and Rosendahl High, um, 4.1 and 4.2. If you can just think about what will be the five forces, uh, which one of the Porter's five forces um, will be um, is at play here for 4.1, and also which one is at play here in 4.2. Now, common mistakes that learners have made in the past, especially in question 4.2. Now, question 4.2, or question four rather, that will be your miscellaneous question in section B, um, where the miscellaneous is a combination of the of uh, business environments and business operations. So they found that in this specific question, specifically business environments, some candidates were not able to identify the relevant Porter's Five Forces model from the statements. So learners get confused with regard to which of the Five Forces, um, Porter's Five Forces, apply to a specific uh, scenario. So others provided incomplete names of the model, such as instead of saying power of competitors, um, they say competition. And then threats or barriers to the market is also one of the common mistakes that learners make. So um, the correct, um, answer they would be for instead of writing competition, you're going to write power of competitors. You can also use competitive rivalry. Um, and then the correct one with regard to threats or barriers to the market, you must say threats or barriers of new entrants. New entrants is missing there. So you must be specific in able for you to get the mark there. Um, are there any answers from Rosendahl? or Florida to question 4.1 and 4.2. 
Florida, welcome. Are there any answers for quest 4.1 or 4.2? There's not in the chat yet, Carmen. Okay, so the answer to 4.1. So it will be the power of competitors or competitive rivalry. The, the action verb says identify, and when it's identify, it means you will get your marks at the end of your answer. So the power of competitors is at play here because it's similar businesses um, in, uh, that provide similar services, so they are in competition with each other. Then 4.2, um, Louisa's hair salon is highly profitable and attracts, attracts many new entrepreneurs to enter this market. So the answer there will be, it's a threat of new entrance to the market, which means there's new businesses coming in, um, also um, providing the same type of service that Lavazi and Louisa's hair salon are providing. So that is a threat to those two businesses. Then question five. Explain two types of defensive strategies. Explain two types of defensive strategies. I would like for you, um, grade 12, to underline or highlight um, the word defensive, defensive. That means businesses are trying to survive. It's a survival strategy, right? So defense, they will, will do anything, right? To defend the company or to keep the company from closing its doors, right? So, um, Defensive strategies is a survival strategy is where businesses are, for example, struggling financially and, and they try whatever they can um, to save the, the business or to keep the business going. It can either be that they sell off some of the assets or they um, close some of the, the divisions or branches that are no longer profitable. It could be that they decide to retrench some of the, the departments in the company that is also um, that they don't use any longer. It can also be uh, uh, um, that they might decide to sell all their assets so that they can pay off their debt. So those are all survival strategies that businesses apply if they are struggling to keep their doors open. So common mistakes that learners have made in the past with regard to this question. A large percentage of candidates could not explain the types of defensive strategies, right? So you must be able to explain the types of defensive strategies. You must explain um, divestiture. You must be, be able to, or disinvestment. You must be able to explain retrenchment and you must be able to explain liquidation. Right. Um, please don't confuse liquidation with liquid or liquidity. That liquidity that is part of investments, uh, securities, uh, that is how quickly you can convert your shares into your investment into cash. So that has nothing to do with liquidation. Liquidation is a different meaning and liquidation applies here under defensive strategies. Um, some responses were incorrectly based on either the types of intensive strategies or diversification strategies. We already uh, spoke about diversification strategies. We said um, that has to do with businesses wanting to introduce new products, different products that are either related or unrelated to their current products. Now, intensive strategies, intensive strategies is where the business try to um, uh, promote their current products to the existing markets um, and where they try to make sales. So their strategy is to increase their sales, right? So um, that they can do through market uh, penetration or they can do it through uh, market development or they can do it through product development. Those are your three types of intensive strategies. 
So it's 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 different from defensive strategies. Many candidates were also confused by the difference between liquidation and divestiture. Liquidation is where you sell the business, sell all its assets, right? Um, to pay off the debt, use the money to pay off the debt. Um, divestiture is where you um, withdraw your monies, where the business withdraw its monies that they have invested in other companies so that they also can use uh, that money somewhere else in the business um, to survive. Are there any questions with regard to defensive strategies, um, Rosendal High or Florida High? Any responses there? Okay, then I think we will continue. So I've already said that you um, guys must underline defensive strategies and that you it refers to a survival strategies where businesses try to survive. Okay, and there we have um, one type of defensive strategy that I spoke about already, divestiture and disinvestment. Um, remember that in um, divestiture, they only sell some of, of the assets. Then we have retrenchment. And then we have liquidation, where they sell all the assets. So the difference between divestiture and liquidation, divestiture, only some assets are, are sold um, that are not lo no longer profitable. And under liquidation, all the assets are sold so that the business can have money to pay their creditors or their debts. Then question six, explain how the following uh, pistol elements or factors may pose uh, challenges to, to the business. So yeah, they're asking you to explain. So to explain, so the, the action verb is explain, therefore uh, a little bit more depth is required in the answer. So you need to explain in detail because the marker is going to apply part marking here. Uh, for the specific question. So um, you need to write your sentences in detail here. So explain how the following pistol elements or factors may pose challenges to the business. Here in this question, the focus is on the challenges. On the challenges. So if you can underline challenges, and then you also write there, refer page 33, core notes. Um, and then you can refer back to your co core notes after the session. Um, it will be the, the middle column in your notes, the middle column. So that uh, answer will apply here. Sorry, um, great work. Hello. No, this is Mrs. Smith. Okay, welcome. Sorry about that. Um, let's continue. Okay, common mistakes um, that were made in this specific question. Many candidates did not attempt this question. I think the reason for that was that um, there's a little bit of a confusion between the challenges and the recommendations. Those who answered this question focused on the impact of crime um, as the only social challenge to businesses. Um, if you look in your core notes on page 33 and you go specifically to the challenge of, of um, social, uh, social factors, um, then you will see that crime is not part of, of the answer in your notes. Right, so so crime is is not applicable in this case here. Okay, so um, the answer that they would look for under your social factors, um, I think it has to do with income levels, income levels of of the consumers, and also um, language um, that businesses maybe um, um, cannot. 
uh, um, that bus that businesses lack the, the the facility to speak or to their customers in a specific language, for example. So language is actually the challenge um, under the social environment. So crime, um, it's, it shouldn't be part of that answer at all. So um, if you can just refer back to your notes. So um, do not use crime as part of, as a, as a challenge in your social environment in the specific context that they're asking you. And uh, some simply gave examples of economic and social factors, while others suggested strategies on how businesses could deal with these uh, factors. So yeah, they don't want recommendation in recommendations in this question. They rather want you to identify the challenges that we find under economic and social uh, um, factors or elements of pistol. Um, then many candidates merely explain the meaning of socioeconomic issues. Socioeconomic issues, the meaning of it is dealt with in grade uh, 10. So that examples does not apply in grade 12. In grade 12, they want you to explain more in detail your understanding of the challenges and recommendations um, in these um, pestle elements or factors. So the grade 10 notes on socioeconomic issues is not applicable here. And move on. Then question six. Explain how the following pistol elements or factors may pose um, challenges to the business. That was the question. And as you can see here, uh, because the, the action verb says explain in the question, part marking will apply. And this is an example of part marking where they give you a mark, where the marker will give you a mark for the fact. And also for the other mark will go for your explanation of the fact, right? Um, so this is where your answer has to be a little bit longer than, than normal, right? Um, 6.2, under social, yes, here you can see customers may not be able to afford the products. So the, the challenge here is the fact that um, uh, customers do not have enough money to buy um, or afford the products that the businesses are selling. So therefore, this would be a challenge under social environment, right? The income levels of, of the customers. Um, and then also, businesses may not be conversant with the language of the customers. So um, if, if there's nobody, if it's not a diverse workforce and nobody understands, for example, Afrikaans in the, in the, in the business, then they are not able to help the Afrikaans speaking customers for example. So um, it has to do social environment, has to do with the income levels of the customers and also the language barriers that exist uh, between the business and the consumers. Are there any questions so far, um, Rosendal High or Florida High, before I move on? There is nothing common. You can continue. Thank you, Oriel. OK, so. We're going to start with um, section C, a section C question or an essay type of question and um, also then common mistakes that are made there. Very important, um, grade 12. Um, in your section C question, you will be given a scenario. Uh, you cannot repeat the scenario under your introduction. A lot of learners do it. Um, I've experienced it now with my learners as well, where they use the scenario as part of the introduction. Some of them even use it as part of the conclusion. You are not going to get marks for repeating the scenario in your introduction. So please refrain from doing that. Um, if you struggle to um, come up with an introduction, then look at your first two bullets um, of your question 
and use some of the content of those two bullets um, as part of your introduction. And you can use the last two bullets of your question. You can use that content also as part of your conclusion if you cannot come up with an introduction or a conclusion. But do not repeat the scenario. You are not going to get marks for it. You can lose four marks if you use the scenario in your introduction and you use that same scenario in your conclusion. Also, please don't write. I will discuss the following. You start your introduction by saying, I will discuss the following. You cannot uh, um, use your introduction in that way. You must start with your facts immediately. Also, with your conclusion, you cannot say, I have concluded the following, or I hereby conclude, or I have discussed the following. You are not going to get marks. It has to be facts coming from your notes. So you, after you've, you must write the word introduction, start with writing the heading introduction, your two sentences, and then your, the headings of your bullets of your question will then follow. So you're going to write your first bullet, then your second bullet, the heading, and your third bullet, and you're going to fill it up with, with facts under each of those bullets. So you must make sure that your essay, the body of your essay, that it has the four bullets, the four headings, before you write the word conclusion. Right. Um, when you write an essay on business strategies, uh, oh, sorry, the question is write an essay on business strategies in which you include the following aspects. So the first bullet, as you can see there, is describe the strategic management process. We have discussed this a little bit earlier where I said the strategic management process becomes comes before the managers evaluate the strategy. So strategic management process is where managers sit, they look at the vision of the business, they look at the current mission statements, they, they, they discuss it, they then um, analyze the three business environments using a SWOT analysis, Porter's Five Forces, and then PESTEL. Um, and then they try to identify whether there are challenges in the micro environment, market or macro environment. And if there are challenges, they will then come up with a strategy to deal with those challenges. So um, once they have a strategy, then they will implement it. And that is where the evaluation strategies come in, the steps in evaluating the strategy comes in. So strategic management process, they ask you to describe. So the action verb describe means that you have to write in detail a little bit more depth and the marker will give you a, a part marks here for this answer. So try to at least write four to five uh, um, sentences here. Then um, discuss the, the second bullet will be, so your heading will then there be strategic management process, strategic management process. Your second bullet, discuss, the action verb discuss also a little bit more detail because part marking will apply here as well. So what did you need to discuss? The three, the three types of defensive strategies. So when they ask you the three types of defensive strategies, under you going, that's going to be your main heading, three types of, of defensive strategies, but now you're going to list the name of your first type of strategy. So defensive strategy, for example, you can start with a disinvestment. You underline it and then you explain what it is, right? What it is. And if you have an example, then you put your example here because you're going to get marks. A most recent example uh, of where a company has um, uh, used the strategy um, of disinvestment where they have, uh, have um, sorry, divestiture, where they have closed some of the divisions that is no longer profitable um, as a defensive strategy. You write your explanation and then your second defensive strategy, you again give a subheading for that. Say, for example, retrenchments, and then you underline it, and then you show the marker. You are now going to discuss what is retrenchments. 
right? And then your third one, um, liquidation, you write liquidation, you underline it, and you explain to the marker uh, what liquidation means, okay? So everything in detail so that the marker knows exactly um, what sentence applies to what heading, right? Um, then your third bullet, explain how businesses could apply Porter's five forces model. So here yeah, um, you are supposed to write about Porter's five forces model. So therefore it will be your third heading. And then you're going to write about the, the Porter's five forces model. So you're going to list it, the power of the, the um, buyers, the power of the competitors or competitive rivalry, um, um, the threat of substitute products and also the threat of new entrants um, in the market. So you're going to then also give subheadings for your third bullet so that uh, it's easier for the market to see your answer and to understand your answer. Then the f explain is also in detail. So part marking will apply here. Then advise businesses on the steps they should consider when evaluating a strategy. Now, here is where um, the strategy has already been implemented. The management is busy evaluating whether that plan of action or whether that strategy is working. So that is different from management process, okay? Your, your action verb there is advice. So advice means um, not an in-depth answers required here. So your marks will be given at the end of the sentence, your answer of your answer. So no part marking applies here. Um, are there any questions, um, Rosendal I of Florida I, with regard to your essay questions, uh, the structure of your essay question? Okay, now response, then don't forget a grade 12, you must write the heading conclusion and then one full sentence um, is required under your conclusion. Um, let me just see. I think we have covered everything under, under question seven. Okay, we don't hear any sound, ma'am. Okay, no. Okay, then it's fine. Um, the videos are not working. So um, are there any further questions? Because I think I've completed um, the session. I see there's still 10 minutes left. If there's any questions from Rosendal High or Florida High. Hi, ma'am. We don't see any questions at all from anybody. <laughs> Okay, then I would like to say thank you very much to both schools who have made the time um, to attend the session. Sorry, ma'am, we have something from Florida. Yes, go ahead, Florida. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, uh, seeing that we have 10 minutes left, I was thinking, can ma'am just go over number one, two, and three with us because we missed that. We only came in by number four. Is oh, you mean okay? slide, slide one, two, and three? Um, no, on the, the on the paper that we got the. the oh, um... question one, two, and three. Yes, ma'am. Please, okay. thank you. Well, do welcome. Okay, we started off with this as an introduction. Um, it's not part of the booklet yet. So it was just part of an introduction where we started off with breaking news. This is just, um, I wanted to show you guys that if you watch the current news and what is happening, um, that you are all able to um, apply your, your content um, to these um, current events that is happening. And that you can also use these current events as, an ex as examples specifically in your essay so that you can score your mark, two marks for originality. So this was a case where um, Appletizer who is a product of Coca-Cola, where now recently, I think it was last week or so, where the product, the Appletizer product was recalled because um, 
microtoxins were found in the in the soft drink. And then the South African National Consumer Commission, which is a regulator of government, so they have sent out a message for all consumers who have bought these appetizer products to return it immediately because of the chemical um, that was found in the soft drink. Um, so here yeah, I have examples of various um, articles that was in the news specifically on the challenge that Coca-Cola is facing at the moment with a product um, appetizer. Um, so we started off with this just to show that businesses experience challenges all the time and that they need to think of ways on how to deal with those challenges. And then they come up with um, strategies um, as ways to deal with the challenges. So that is what we started off. And then I tried to show a video, but the sound um, wasn't working at all. And then we started with a booklet. Then the common mistakes that were identified um, from learners that, uh, uh, that wrote the past exam papers is that some of the learners were confused with diversification strategies and with integration strategies. So diversification strategies is we um, it's strategies where businesses focus on introducing new products or services to their current product range. So the difference between the two is that diversification, the focus is on products, whereas integration, the focus is on merging with other companies, merging with other companies. So um, there must be, you must understand the clear difference between the two. Uh, types of strategies. And then the suggestion um, that was, was recommended is that learners must be encouraged to use practical examples when explaining the meaning of diversification and integration strategies. So diversification strategies will be concentric, um, conglomerate and horizontal. Um, so you must um, also be able to um, give examples, and then that will show you the difference between diversification and integration strategies. Your integration is um, um, moving forward or buying out businesses moving forward in your um, distribution channel, and also buying out businesses moving backward in your in, um, distribution channel, and also horizontally in the distribution channel where um, competitors in the same industry uh, merge or take over um, each other. And then your answer to question one was, um, you could name any two types. So there's three types, so it's forward vertical, backward vertical, um, or horizontal. Then question two, um, outline the steps in strategy evaluation. I've asked the learners to underline strategy evaluation. At this stage, the strategy has already been implemented or the plan of action has already been implemented in the business, implemented in the business. Management are busy evaluating whether the plan of action or the strategy has actually worked. So they're going to look and monitor the, the uh, plan of action and see whether that plan of action, whether it has reached the target or whether it has reached or made a difference um, in the challenge that they were facing. So strategy evaluation is basically measuring or assessing whether a strategy has worked. Some of the mistakes that candidates have made is that they confuse the steps in strategy evaluation with strategic management process. Now, strategic management process happens before strategy evaluation. Strategic management process is when managers, <clears throat> they analyze their vision, their mission statement, they do an uh, um, analysis of the three um, business environments, they, for example, use a SWOT analysis to analyze the mi micro environment. They use Porter's five forces, forces model um, to analyze the, the market environment. And then they use PESTEL to analyze 
the macro environment. So um, that is what they do under strategic management process. And once they've analyzed those three environments using those three industrial tools, they can now identify where challenges exist. And once they have identified where the challenge exists, then they come up with a strategy or a plan of action to deal with that specific challenge in that specific environment. This um, will be done first before they will evaluate the strategy. Evaluating the strategy, the strategy or the plan of action is now in place. The business have applied it. They bu they're busy checking whether it has worked. I hope that will help uh, um, a little bit in understanding the difference. Then they said some of the learners confused this question with either the steps in strategy for formulation. Steps in strategy formulation will not be tested this year according to the exam guideline because strategy formulation is a combination of strategy evaluation and strategic management process. So it will actually be a repetition um, um, of asking the same questions, right? So steps in strategy evaluation formulation will then not be tested. And then steps in problem solving, that has to do with creative thinking. So it's not applicable in the section of the work at all. Or in paper one, it is part of paper two. Then um, the answers that learners also gave was um, to strategy evaluation is that it has to do with formulating a strategy and implementing a strategy. These two answers is only applicable to the steps in strategy formulation. And remember, I said it will not be tested. So therefore, um, do not write these answers. OK, because it forms part of steps in strategy formulation. And please also look at your mark allocation. If the mark allocation is six, then it means only three uh, answers are required. And the verb outline is that um, they don't require that in depth an answer from you. So um, your marks will be awarded to you at the end of your answer. So we have spotted the error there. And we've also spoken about um, that. So there's your steps in strategy evaluation. Um, so you can, that's your answer. So you can see clearly here that management is busy evaluating whether the strategy that they came up with, that it has been working. They examine the reason why did they implement the strategy in the first place. Um, then they must decide how they're going to um, start the strategy. But what time will they start? When will they end the, the strategy? They're going to look forward um, whether it has been implemented successfully and then backwards as to whether it has made a difference um, with regard to the challenge that they are facing. Um, also looking forward and backward, this is the process where they can identify if there are any further mistakes and how they're going to deal with that mistakes. So here is where they speak about deviation. So they will try as far as possible during this process to correct those deviations that they are still experiencing. Then question three was recommend ways. I said to the learners, underline recommend ways um, by looking at your core notes on page 33. You will see that the third column under these pestle elements, the third column of the pestle elements refers to a recommendation. So this is that is what they want in this answer, recommendations. Your middle column will be challenges. So learners tend to confuse the challenges with a recommendation. If your question starts with recommend ways, you know that that is recommendations that they want from you and not the challenges in the specific um, pistol elements that they are asking. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Um, Florida, is there anything else that I need to explain to you before we end off? Hi, Carmen. There's no questions that has been posted. OK, then I assume we can end off the session. Um, we can, Carmen. Thank you very much, Rosendahl, hi, and Florida, hi, for your time and the sacrifice that I, you've made. I know that it's holiday. Um, 
but um, there's an end goal in sight. Um, and I would like to wish you all the best um, for your exams. And I know that you are going to be successful and that you're going to give us that 80, 90 and 100 percent. So strong for your exams. Thank you, educators as well. Thank you.